Cespedes, Cespedes, and uh, I'm here to talk about um, an idea that I've had for like years now, since 1997 or 6 or something like that. And there's a couple of ideas that I've had since 1996 or 7 since till now, 2013 or 14. And it's about my wild fantasies about uh, scientific advances in music and uh, advancements in uh, in robotics, movies, um, just every little thing. What I want to start off with is my pride and joy, my idea of the future of music, and that is visual music. To me, I think that music can only reach certain le le uh, a, a, uh, reach levels um, to where it reaches a limitation of creativity. You can only make up so many sounds to where they're all going to sound the same eventually. You know, even electronic music has a lot of limitations. And um, a lot of uh, um, a lot of my theories is that visual music has been around for a long time. I looked it up since 2003, 2005. I used to print out papers of people back in the late 1800s or early 1900s. They would mess around with these um, keyboard light um, light keyboard things where they would press a key, musical key, and it would shine a light. Uh, it would project a light on the wall. And for each and for each key, there would be a specific um, abstract lit projection, different color projection for each sound and for each key of the music. And they and this old keyboards that people would create these devices to create visual music that would project different types of colors for each sound of the key that would project on the wall. And these beautiful abstract like they would use like glass glass bottles and and kind of paint it and with like a a, a nice see-through uh paint glass whatever you call it uh and they would shine a light and it would look real beautiful real abstract very stringy kind of a um abstract looking image and the thing is though is that for me visual music can reach very cool levels of huge astronomical uh, awesomeness when combined with visual images for you know my idea in a nutshell this is my idea for visual music what I want to do is that in the future if I have enough money and if I gain enough knowledge on my own or get help from other people is that I want to create a, a visual music generator that would um that would project in mid-air holographic images of music and each of these images would represent each separate sound be broken down from each separate sound from each instrument in a song regardless of what the song is but more specifically it'll be for electronic music um, but for beautiful music you know uh, um, for each for each image there would be a separate sound entwined with that image. Like if there was a guitar, there would be a separate sound that would specifically dance to the guitar. If there was a bass drum, there would be a bass bumping to that bass drum. And a snare, there would be a pop, and a visual holographic pop going to the snare. And piano keys would be separate. Each of these separate holographic images would dance to their assigned instrument sound but they would be flowing inter flowingly separately in space and uh, and dancing and flowing in a very symmetrical ballet in the air you know and that's what I want to do with music is create a visual music generator that would project holographic images in the air and that to me is like the ultimate advancement and I would I would say like the, the final level for music I would say the, there's no other levels for music except to see it you know and uh, and also um, that would be also too something really huge it'll be you know I want to create a device that's you know this is kind of a fantastic idea but I want to create a machine that would project this visual music images 
it's so huge that it would cover the whole sky you know like huge vast huge like as far as the sky can reach before it reaches space that's how vast i want the visual music to be creating a huge concert of visual music awesomeness and just this great visual um like a light show but more complex and more of my taste and style and much more sophistication and more clarity and the more emotional uh, creativity attached to me because I've been thinking about it for a long time and uh, um, and all the, all, the, all, the, all the images will have their own separate colors and all very cool awesome colors they will shift to the mood of colors but each instrument will have their own separate color each holographic Im instrument visual holographic instrument will have their own separate color but they'll be assigned appropriately for the mood of the song in such a way and the other thing is that uh, I want to create a, a robot, a CGI robot, that would uh, that I would uh, have dance to, to the music. You know, uh, like a cute little robot. You would teach the moonwalk to. You would teach them Mars walk, statue glide. You would teach it, and it would dance as though people would look at this robot, and I want people to love the robot almost like they loved, like the pop star Michael Jackson, like the admiration of it you know the cuteness of it and uh, this robot would be so uh, lovable and, and so wild, wildly popular that like when they see him dancing they would think that is that a robot or is that a child in a suit in a robot suit you know he'll be kinda like small kinda like you know I'm 5'9 but he'll be kinda like me uh, 3 something or 4 something 4 feet something but something very cute, cute. and uh, he would have very fluid human movements and he'll be doing all his awesome pop and locking and all these types of things and a lot of tap dancing and but a lot but it has his own personality and his own ideas and a very human emotionally human uh, created robot and uh, we would have adventures and I'll make movies with him and and specifically he'll be dancing with 80s and 90s music more than any other modern music with uh, Alexander O'Neill uh, I would make uh, remake videos of him in Alexander O'Neill. Uh, uh, if you were here tonight, um, Alexander O'Neill, I would make like a, a dance craze with my robot with Alexander O'Neill's fake and have like a dance craze with it, you know, along with the visual music on concert with the robot, you know, and um, and also uh, that robot would also, we could have like, you could have buddies and stuff like the other robots. My robot would be called Minus like the symbol minus like from the mathematics M I N U S and the other robots will be called uh, Ver Zinc and the uh, other one will be Bubba the, uh, the other robot will be called Bubba the other um, it will be called Bubba just because it's just something funny and wacky and people wouldn't be calling robots Bubba but I will call the robot Bubba be like a thin kind of a thin very skinny kind of stick figure robot and Ver would be Ver the robot would be kind of like a spiky haired um, um, robot like a, this, this kind of very similar to Minus. Minus would be like a very round head kind of similar to Stewie from Family Guy but more uh, more perfectly round with big eyes and the mouth I haven't decided the mouth would move but it would just have like similar to um, Johnny Five it would have like a like lights whenever he would talk you know and uh, I would also have the robot have all types of all types of cool styles, very slick and sophisticated, very beautiful robot. Like I would uh, use, you know, how vehicles they have wood on the on the dashboards, like real maple wood. Well, I would put real maple wood on embedded just so stylistically in the robot's shoulders. Very beautiful, uh, handcrafted maple wood wood with just a, a beautiful glaze and on the head too, round the head a perfect little design of the maple robot wood on the head of the robot you know just beautiful designs like I, I would paint the robots like almost like a vehicle like a candy a candy uh, apple sparkly um, red color you know like a ve like how you would with the car very beautiful colors um, midnight purple 
you know, paint them midnight purple, sparkly, that, that kind of a uh, candy apple kind of sparkliness. I don't know what you would call it. But just but you would treat them like almost like you would paint uh, a very popular um, car, you know, make them look real good and stylish. And uh, not only that, but they would have personality. They don't I mean, they would get along with people. Um, I would I would probably play, play toys with them and chess and things like that in the video games, things like that. And also we would uh, work together to uh, uh, help society and uh, neighborhoods very positive things and make sure that the robots had a very positive image very positive they would be caring and loving and helping people and you would see them throwing trash for people and and uh, talking to them and uh, joking with them and uh, you could drink and smoke with them act like a friend almost like a buddy that you wait you go to sleep and you wake up to you know kind of like the robots would be kind of like that and uh, okay the visual music the robots and what else? Uh, movies. You know, we're using a lot of 3D movies, and they're getting very advanced, especially with the uh, with the uh, the Game Boy 3DS. That's awesome. You know, as a as a as an older man, if I had that as a child, I'll be like, wow, like this. That's like a dream, cause like it's like it's everything that a that an, a 90s child wanted. A 90s kid wanted it's like a 3D something something so cool and just like it just grabs you and that's like a 3ds so cool no glasses involved that's amazing but I had an idea for like virtual movies you're involved in a virtual movie you're surrounded in the environment of the movie the story and plot is it's like being involved in the play with actors but you're engulfed in the film you're sitting in the in the theaters seats and you're flying and wherever the basically you're the camera where you're sitting in the theaters basically your eyes are the camera if the camera like in the film like in movies you know spider-man is on the, on the buildings and he's swinging you'll be right behind him you know flying but you'll be involved in this whole world a whole a holographic virtual movie and you'll be following like that but in my films it'll be just something Something real fantastic, very vast, like being being in a whole new world. Not just a play, but a real holographic, huge, vast world that you're involved in. You feel the heat of the sun, you feel the raindrops, you feel the wind blowing, you feel the, you know, you, you hear the loud noises, the thunder, you're afraid, you're scared. The the people will be involved like a roller coaster ride, flying above thousands of feet above the ground and space. And they'll be flying and, and swooshing and action-packed explosions and just something real awesome and exciting you know that's what I wanted to kinda that's something that, that also was my idea too and I had ideas for scripts too but uh, it's kinda similar to Mega Man but a different version of Mega Man and more emotionally and different more grown up and let's see I did the visual music the robots um, the movies and also mathematics and things like that like you know, I want to be involved in mathematics. If I can't invent these things, these are my dream inventions. Everybody wants to be remembered for something. Everybody wants to be a legend, you know. In some way, I want to be a legend. I want to be remembered for something. I just hope that whatever I do is something positive and good. But I really do want to invent these inventions because I want to be remembered for doing something that's original. And so, if I don't invent those things... I'll try hard to study mathematics and solve the Riemann hypothesis or the Hodge conjecture. Either one will be fantastic. And after that, I'll try my best to invent these things, but and, uh, but I'll probably slow down and stop if I were to solve any of these math problems, these uh, Clay Institute math problems. So that's basically, you know, if I'm getting anything, let me think. Hmm... Oh, there's, there's other little things like, imagine having uh, your favorite cartoon character hanging out with you. You would have this uh, anti-gravity mechanical digital ball following you. And wherever you go, it would show a projection in midair or right on the floor. If you wanted to hang out with, uh, with uh, Mr. Uh, Scrooge McDuck or Bart Simpson or uh, Brian from The Family Guy, I think his name is, or Stewie or um, Donald Duck, Daffy Duck, or anything like that, it would just show 
a projection on the floor and this machine will be this little ball will be hovering projecting it and it would it it would have its own intelligence whenever you would respond it would it would calculate what you say and the projection would show the imagery the animation of the imagery of the hologram of the of the of the character and respond to you because all the technology and the artificial intelligence is right here and it will project the response to the animation down there and whenever you would say like hey Daffy you wanna go get a beer and he would respond and he would say yeah let's go and whenever you would walk the hologram the holographic ball the, the, the mechanical ball would just hover and it'll have the animation character walking beside you while the the ball is hovering and projecting it as walking following you you know it would hover with you so you, you would have like a, a friend a, a cartoon friend you can hang out with for hours on day and as time passes you would create uh, they would have more advanced deeper intelligence so the cartoon character would be like there for you know when you have trouble in your life or things like that you know so deep and everything Donald Duck trying to uh, uh, help you with your love life or something like that you know like it will be very like that and like cartoon characters just being and talking to them hanging out as friends and all that technology will be in that hovering mechanical digital ball just projecting the image holographic image walking on the floor you know and all the information will just be there so uh, that's one thing that I want to talk about hoverboards the Mars walk I invented that thing it's very com it's kind of difficult to do uh, just those things um, um, I don't know if anybody knows but I, I, I was the one that invented the uh, forward moonwalk you know you go like this you go like that you know it, it, the forward moonwalk I, invent, I, I invented that back in 2003 but I didn't have a chance to put on YouTube because I didn't know YouTube existed and it didn't exist until 2005 I invented the Ford Moonwalk, but no one knows about that. Now it's out there, and you know it's still waiting to be perfect, perfected. But I was the one that thought about that, and I actually was the first one. I do believe I was the first one to come up with the the Sunwalk, whatever Earth Walk, whatever it's called now. But I wasn't able to show it on because I didn't have nothing. I didn't wasn't aware of the technology back in 2003. And uh, those are the biggest ideas that I have about my dreams and about my aspirations and my imaginative vast imagination and creativity and my love of just life doing great things positive things all the inventions that I want to invent were positive all my robots having Daffy Duck as a hologram we would all be helping people Daffy Duck would all with the with with the vast technology Daffy Duck and Donald Duck would be like real people solving pro solving people's problems and talking to them you know It'll be just so vast and so so important that technology that the impossible becomes becomes possible. You know, those are my dreams, aspirations, and uh, I think that that about covers it. You know, and uh, maybe one day I'll invent one of those things. My dream, one of my dreams will come true to be remembered as some legend of some sort in this world to be on Wikipedia. You know. A real legitimate person that that deserves to be on Wikipedia, you know. And maybe one day it will happen. Okay, well, I think that's about everything. Thank you very much, Richard Cespedes, and uh, God bless you, and thank you for listening.